we've always been taught to have an emergency fund, right? The, the term emergency puts you in a scarcity mindset off the cuff. <laughs> it's an emergency fund, right? And I'm not saying anybody shouldn't have an emergency fund. You want to have your, 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 your basis covered. But what about having an opportunity fund? Mm -hmm. I like that. You're talking so, good. Right? So now you have money set aside to take advantage of an opportunity if it persists, mm -hmm. right? One of the things I love about hanging with Dion, Dion, like hanging around him, I find I, I stumble upon money. Yeah. Like from a funding <laughs> standpoint, 20,000 this bank, 50,000, I'm just stacking my funding ability so that if a recession does happen, I have an opportunity fund and I'm able to take advantage of something versus being a victim of something. Okay, mm -hmm. I like it, I like it. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We find dope people that did dope stuff. Today's no different, man. And we're going to talk a little bit about making money. Well, we're going to talk a lot about making money. A lot. A lot? A lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. a whole lot. <laughs> so this whole episode is about making money. <laughs> okay, well, not only making money, yeah. but uh, keeping money. I was just talking to the morning meetup, and um, I was telling them that it's easier, and I want to get you guys' opinion, easier to make money or to keep money. Mm. Mm, that's good. Um, I think it's easier. I think it's easier to make money because now mm -hmm. we live in a space where we're in a digital space. Making money is, is, is it can be easy in certain instances, but a lot of people don't know how to keep it from not spending it. Right. Mm -hmm. And from not in, investing it and especially from taxes. You know what I'm saying? So I think that we think making money is the end all be all. But then we look at and like, how much are you actually keeping though, bro? Yeah, so yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I, I would say the same. Uh, I've been making a lot of money. And I think we all can attest to that. But I had to call Carter because I said, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to save the money. That's, that's <laughs> like, my Where did issue. it all go? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and where I don't want to pay it in taxes. So I think it's easy to make it and save it. Yeah. yeah. But you know what's crazy? People who don't make money, they'll probably say it's harder to make money than to keep it. Because if you get a paycheck, yep. all you got to do is just yep. not spend it. Yeah. But it seems like the more you make, the harder it is to not spend it. <laughs> and and there are things that we call investments that though they are a business expense, not really. So for instance, I got I got five or six cameras here, right? Mm -hmm. And they're really good cameras. Look how they look. It's really good. Uh, but my friend was telling me about this other camera. It's a Sony FX30. It's like, yo, you should get this FX30. Mm. It does this and that and all that. You could get these lenses. The camera might be like 2000. A really good lens is going to be like another 1500 each lens. So I went and bought five of the new cameras. <laughs> Justification. It's a business expense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But did I need to buy that? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm masking what I want in a business expense. I don't I don't need five more cameras, bro. Yeah. And one thing we always say in, in the accounting world is don't let the tail wag the dog. Don't spend a dollar to save 40 cents. Don't spend a dollar to save 50 cents, right? Because you still spent a dollar. Mm -hmm. So we need to think about what do we actually need that's gonna help our business generate more income. Just because you go buy something and it's a tax deduction. But is it gonna be make you more money, right? Mm -hmm. Now these cameras, you could sell the other ones, keep the keep the new ones. But like you might not need all uh, ten. But you, we got to be smart about. Um, I love the fact that you're thinking about write offs, but like also, what do we actually need versus yeah. just want? You know what I'm saying? For sure. Look, let's get into this conversation. But I would love for you gentlemen to uh, introduce yourself. Um, you got new to the show, okay? For sure. Carter's a cousin, you know what I mean? more <laughs> meet up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I guess you 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 can introduce yourself um, and what it is that you do. Yep. So my name is Dion Coopwood. Uh, Instagram at Mr. Phenomenal Power for those who don't follow me. Uh, born and raised in the South Side of Chicago, and I teach individual entrepreneurs and coaches not how to pay somebody else, how to enhance and improve your credit. But I teach you how to do it yourself and how to start a, your own credit repair organization, so that way you can go get it back too. Oh, so you teach people not, okay. So there's some people that teach how to repair your credit or yeah. how to you know, like kind of improve your credit score, yeah. but you're teaching people how to teach people yes. how to do that. And I'm teaching them how to do it themselves. Cause most people, when we, when we see bad stuff on our credit, we go run into somebody else and pay them thousands of dollars to do it. And unfortunately we never really get results. So I teach them a whole totally different concept called Metro two compliance where I'm showing them how to, with the simple upload of their credit profile and one click of a button, how they can repair their own credit and get excellent results 
and then how to take the same concept that I taught you to do for yourself, how to do it for somebody else and make money doing it. All right. So I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like write letters. I don't want to send them over. Yep. Then wait for nothing to happen. Then you yep. write more letters. Yep. And then I don't want to do that. Yep. And it seems like fixing your own credit or, and I don't even know if I'm, am I saying that right? Is it fixing your own credit? Is it repair, yeah. right? Yeah. Repairing like, like repair, your, yeah. Yeah. I know there's something you're not supposed to say. Yeah. Somebody was telling me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And it seems too laborious. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And that's why everybody has been coming to me because the concept that I teach, which again is called Metro 2 Compliance. Metro 2 Compliance. Metro 2 Compliance. It's a concept where you don't have to worry about getting a fax machine, a printer. Mm -hmm. You don't worry about what letters. Because most people say, oh, get a 609 letter, get a 611 letter and send that in. And then you're going to keep sending rounds of letter in. You don't have to do none of that. You don't need no, inner, you know, ink, no printer. You don't need none of that. I have a system that's going to do everything for you. All you got to do is go get your credit report, upload it into my system, one click of a button, it does everything for you. Really? Everything. He was the first person I ever saw doing that because like, you know, we all get the letters and you tell your people like you mail the letters away. I don't got time for that. But he yeah. told me about this thing and I'm like, bro, this is different. Yeah. And then I, I, I had him speak at one of my events and he getting people's bankruptcies removed. Off their, I'm like, bro, yeah. This is different. So that's why I was like, bro, you own, you own something. I know a lot of people in the credit space and I love all my friends in the credit space, yeah. but this Metro 2 stuff, this is this is different. All right, yeah. so how you how did you, what happens? Because you don't just, <laughs> you don't just push a button and that joint yeah. is fixed. Like yeah. what happens yeah. when you push that button? All right, so let me, let me, I have to bring you back to make it make sense though. Okay, please. So most people who do credit repair, they teach in factual dispute. You heard of that, right? What, uh, factual dispute. Factual? Factual. Dispute. Factual dispute. Okay. That means that something That's that Chicago is twang. I, I, mean, <laughs> I hear it. That means that there's something on my credit report, and when I look at it, I can factually dispute it, which is the only one true legal way in order to repair your credit. Okay. It's called factual dispute, and that's even on the credit repair exam. So that means that I see some on my credit report, and the information is either need to be verified that I own it, or the information needs to be accurate across all three bureaus, or it needs to be complete. So there's so many different variables in which information is not accurate all across three bureaus because they're not communicating with each other. Most people are doing factual disputing. Well, the problem with that is that the credit bureaus are getting paid to report items from data furnishers. That means that if you owe eighteen, hold on, hold on. The credit report. So TransUnion, let's yes. say, gets paid yes. to put stuff on their report. So if you had a phone with AT and T mm -hmm. and you left and went to T-Mobile, yeah. And you owe AT&T, you forgot to pay that last bill. AT&T now says, David owe us money, and we're going to pay trans, equal facts, and experience to report it. Oh. So they're getting paid by these data furnishers to report all the information. So when you send in a letter saying, this ain't mine, no verify it, they're going to send it back and say verify it because they want to continue to get paid. So they're going to fight you as long as they can. So that's the problem with consumers because that's the issue. Whereas if you use Metro 2 Compliance, Metro 2 Compliance states that the credit bureaus must be in compliance with their own standard that they put in place. So they sat down at the round table, Trans, Equal Facts, and Experian, along with Innovis. They called themselves the CDIA, the Consumer Data Industry Association. So they sat down and they put together a compliance standard that states that in order for items to even be reported on a consumer credit profile, it must meet Metro 2 Compliance standard. And majority of the information don't meet it because... When did I ever do transactions with a lot of these third party companies and or these credit like collection agencies? I never did business with you guys. So why is you reporting it? So when I send in a letter, I'm basically telling the credit bureaus, hey, you put together this standard in place and all information must mandatorily be in compliance with with the information to be reported. So since it doesn't, I need you to remove it. And they just say, right, I'm going to remove it. Really? It's, they, it's they standard, but they're not teaching it. Nobody's talking about it. So I'm teaching and talking about it. And everybody like, what the hell is this? So he using their own compliance standard against them, which makes them have to remove it. Because like, if it's your idea, and I'm telling you, this is, this is your idea, bro. Yeah. Right. You told me, you came up with like, this. Came up with these this. So, rules, bro. Yeah, these are your rules. I'm just telling you, yeah. these don't go with your rules. That's it. So most people, they're sending in letters talking about what's being reported. I'm sending it where I'm teaching people to send in a letter where you not, you're not even really sending it because my system is doing it for you. The system is putting together the letter that states that it doesn't have the ability to be even reported. I'm not talking about what's being reported, what's there. I'm saying it don't even, it, it can't even be there because you put this standard in place and it doesn't, it goes against all standards. That's hard. That's How long hard. you been in this space? A few years. 
And were you, what made you get into this business? I've always liked numbers and, and, and math and anything dealing with financial literacy. I always liked it. Prior to getting into it, I was doing life insurance and financial planning mm -hmm. prior to that. So I said, man, this is cool, but life insurance is the most sexy topic. And I said, what can I do that's similar to it? Mm -hmm. And it was crazy because I was actually uh, running my own solar renewable energy company and we were having, having challenges in the company where we were getting people qualified to go solar. So I said, well, I need to start this credit company. And so I did that to go through the repair process and it was gruesome because I was doing factual disputing, mm -hmm. trying to get people credit repaired. And I came across Metro 2 and I said, all right, let me research this thing. And man, I said, this thing bad. And I partnered up um, with a gentleman and um, got with a developer and created my own software that gets the job done. Because I said, I don't want to, I don't want nobody, if you're going to do credit repair, don't step to two, three o'clock in the morning trying to compile letters, doing copy and paste and doing all of that. I want to create a system that with one click of a button, it does the job for you. And so I it's like been created. Dion's, Dion's dope, man. Yeah, I mean, cool people, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't invite nobody who's not, you know. <laughs> yeah. And we both from the South Side of Chicago. That's what I love, man. Because where we're from, you're taught, like, if somebody, if somebody's on your level in your space or, you know, like, that's competition. Yeah. Get them away from, you know, you know eliminate the competition. But, like, we're trying to show two, we're trying to show the world that two people from the South Side of Chicago, yeah. black men can come together and really um, try to educate our people on financial literacy and do it together in a way that's benefiting everybody. Gotcha. But you don't do the same thing that he does. No, 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 no. Right. So I guess introduce yourself now. Gotcha. Um, Carter Cofield, uh, Cofield advisor on uh, uh, all social media platforms. And I teach entrepreneurs and business owners how to live tax free mm -hmm. because I saw that, yo, we're in a digital entrepreneur space. Like everybody's starting their business and making money. It's a beautiful thing. Right. But I came from the world of helping wealthy people keep all their money, keep millions. So I'm like, why am I doing this for people who don't look like me? When I have all these people who look like me, who are starting businesses, who are leveling up, why don't I take my knowledge that I have from the corporate world, the co corporate tax saving world, start my own business and help my people not just make the bag, but help them keep the bag. Because we not, know it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. Mm -hmm. So my job is teaching people all the strategies that I know that I took from this, this corporate world and helping millionaires save millions. I mean, like yeah. taking a tax bill from five million down to like hundreds of thousands, if not zero, right? Teaching that to my people on how to like um, keep the money, live tax-free and build generational wealth in the process. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I see both of you uh, do some teaching in terms of empowering other people, mm -hmm. right? And I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna get into like the psychology behind making money and what it takes. So not, we're not gonna put your numbers out there, but you like almost three extra income from last year to this year. Yeah. And last year wasn't a little bit. We, okay. What did you do? What what <laughs> happened? Like, well, how did you like three X your income from a sizable income? First off, what happened? Um, I think number one, it starts with mentors, right? So I now have four mentors that I pay a lot of money to learn. Uh, Neil Davis, obviously being one of them, um, because I learned that the difference between the money I make right now and the money I want to make is information and execution. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to leave it up to me to get the information. I know how to execute. So I'm going to just pay these people to tell me what to do. And the beautiful part about paying somebody is when you pay somebody so much money, you're going to do what they say. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you can do what they say. So I, I pay yeah. mentors to teach me strategies on what to do. And then the, probably the biggest thing I did was create a list of what I shouldn't do. So at the top of this year, I looked at the, the activities I was making in my business. What are these activities that I'm doing that's either making me no money or little money that I can eliminate and then double down on the activities that are making me a lot of money? What was making you a little bit of money? Um, do, doing minimum wage activities. Right. So uh, booking my own flights, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, just creating processes. And so now I have an operations manager. She creates all the processes and, 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 and things that we, and systems that we need in place. And I just focus on doing what I do best, which is teaching tax strategies, learning new tax strategies that I can then teach my, my students and my, my clients. So I think that was, that was really big because I was spending a lot of time on minimum wage activities. And now I spend my time on have high value, high revenue activities. Gotcha. How was your last year? It was good? Uh, yeah, it was good. Five X'd. You 5X from last year to this year? 5X. What'd yeah. you do? Um, I followed the concept of those who don't pay, don't pay attention. Mm. So I, I put myself in a position similar to Carter where I said, I, I need to pay. 
so I can really put myself in position to really pay attention to the individual that is coaching and mentoring me to get to that next level. And similar to uh, Carter, that's what we met in EO's program. And so I paid Neo and I just said, yo, if I'm going to pay somebody this amount of money, I need to get a return on my investment. He's getting a lot of free advertisement. Right now, yeah. Okay? yeah. But he's a good yeah, guy. I need my money, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, that's really what it was. And, and the, the same month that I paid, um, the following month I got, I got my money back because yeah. it was, it, it was like, I, I had a burning desire to want to get to that next level. You know what I mean? And I knew that, you know, when I looked at somebody, people got to understand, like, if you really want to be successful, you need to get with the person that, that is performing at the level that you want to be at. Yeah. And so when I looked at, you know, individuals like a Neo and so, so forth, I said, that's, that's where I want to get to. And so when I paid him, I said, I got to get my money back. Yeah. And so when he told me the plays to run, I instantly ran them. You know, a lot of people don't understand that concept. They'd be like, well, why are you guys charging? Why are you guys charging? Well, why wouldn't you? Because if you get it for free, you're not going to value it the same. Yeah. You know, it's like all of us, you know, we can, we got children and stuff like that. If you just give your children stuff, they like, all right, cool. But if you make them buy what they two, three dollars yeah. that they got, they'd be like, yo, they're not going to get the shoes dirty ever. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> sure. it's, a, it's a different feeling when you got to pay for stuff. So yeah, when you pay, you'll pay attention. That's it. Yeah. You know what? I, 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 I had a similar story too, but it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't like when I invested the money, I said, I got to get the money back. I think me investing the money and releasing a large amount of money mm. minimized the amount of money it was. Meaning like uh, I, when you invest, if you've never invested $5,000, it's probably because $5,000 is a lot of money to you. Yep. And if $5,000 is a lot of money to you, of course you're not going to charge nobody that. But if you invest 5,000, you let invest another 5,000, the amount, the amount is smaller now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, oh, five, oh, five, oh, five, no problem. Yeah. Now, when it's time to charge somebody five, you're like, oh, give me five. Yeah. I, I'm always putting this five out and people can feel when you haven't invested. So it wasn't even like my mindset wasn't, oh, I got to get the money back. It was me getting more comfortable with releasing the money, which now I can like talk to somebody and say, yo, it's only five. You're going to pay me 5,000. You're going to, yeah, especially if you invest five or 10 or 20 or whatever, mm -hmm. 30, you, and you get a result. If you invest $30,000, you get a result. You can't wait to charge somebody 30000 to give them a result. Mm. <laughs> but the result don't come without you yeah. investing that. Can I give yeah. you something that changed my life? Talk to um, you. She did, recently did an episode with Bill. What's his name? Hauser? Bill Hauser, yeah. Yeah. He said something at a conference that changed my life forever. He said, when before he about to, he's about to invest money himself, and he feels like it's a lot of money, right? Um, so I just invested $200,000 in a, in, a, in, a, in a program, and I was petrified. But I remember what Bill you said. You invest 200000 Yeah. 200000 I haven't done that yet. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? What I invested in? No. The VIP day? 200. Oh, the yeah. VIP. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I haven't done, you know what? I had the opportunity to. It's telling me about it, and I was like, oh, all right. It sounds dope. I mean, it's like, sounds dope. But it's 200,000. I had a poverty mindset. Yeah. yeah. So, so. I have a poverty mindset. <laughs> yeah. So, you had to agree with me, bro. God, <laughs> so, what Bill said is when you think that something is, is a lot of money, don't get mad at the person charging you. Get mad at yourself that you still think that that's a lot of money. Mm, that's tough, right? So when I was about to spend two hundred thousand, it's like I was like, "Why is he charging me two hundred thousand dollars?" But then I had to look at myself: is what are you, Carter? What are you doing wrong that two hundred thousand dollars is still a lot of money to you? Yeah. And when you do that, that changes your whole mindset because it's like, all right, I need to do what I need to do, so this is no longer a lot of money to me, yeah. right? So that, so that having that perspective shift my life, shifted my mindset. So now when I pay money, I'm like, yo. I got to do whatever it takes that so that this is no longer a lot of money to me. And that's the road I'm on to now. Dang. Mm. Ah, it's still a lot to me. It's, it's, but I released it, right? I released you it. Released so now, it? now my price is going up. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Goodness gracious. So yeah. I, I want to know what it is like, cause you guys both deal with clients and uh, some of our peers, they have clients. And um, I want to know what is the difference between a client that's successful and a client who isn't successful? Like, what are some of the traits that you find in those people? Mm. So, we, so we're so we saying somebody who may come and take our program or what have you. And yeah, just like, just uh, there, everybody, everybody, there's a lot of people that's going to watch this interview, yeah. right? Yeah. Some people are going to take the information yeah. and they're going to go be successful. Yeah. Somebody's, they're just going to go turn on Netflix or something like yeah. that. 
it's the same different they're, they're different people they're watching the same thing yeah but yeah. what is the difference between these two people um some people are addicted to information but they're alleg- allergic to execution mm-hmm. like they just like you know i i want to i want to in- invest in this i want to indulge in it i want to do it but then when it comes time to actually put in the work they just can't show up for themselves and then you got people. Why can't they? Like, what? What is it that you, maybe that you've noticed? And I don't know. You need to make this a study. Yeah. What is that thing that won't allow them to take action? For the main thing for me, I think it's environment driven. Um, they their surroundings don't quite allow them to get over that hump. A lot of people are asking people who are not let let's say um, I'm I'm I want to use the right category, but they're asking people who aren't qualified. Can they go be successful? So let me give you an example. It doesn't make sense for me to go ask my mom, you know, how to make the money I made this year, how to be an entrepreneur. But my mom has never really been an entrepreneur. She's never really been a successful entrepreneur. So how can I go ask my mom, hey, is this podcasting thing that I want to get into with David Shans? Is this a good investment, mom? Is this a good idea? She's probably going to say, no, I don't see that working. How do you how do you think that's going to work? She's going to talk me out of my goals and out of my dreams. And it's not that. It's, it's not that she's trying to look out for me. She's trying to care for me as mom. She's just projecting her fears and her thought process and what she think and how she feels off on me. Mm. But I made the first mistake because I went to somebody who I valued their opinion. I asked them, what did they think? And they told me what they thought. And I valued it. And I mm. said, you know what? Maybe my mom's right. So it's my environment as opposed to maybe I should call Carter. Maybe I should call the person who's going to mentor me and he's going to tell me, of course, you may be afraid and, you know, you're going to be scared. Carter may say, bro, yes, you're going to be afraid, but you need to just do it anyway. I need to be around people that are at the level, again, that I'm looking to go to. So that way, when I decide to be afraid and talk myself Mm -hmm. off the ledge, they can say, no, bro, like you need to go in a whole different direction. So I think a lot of these people, one, they just don't have it in them. And then two, it's the environment. So they don't have nobody to go to to say, hey, like, is this really a good idea? Like, it's, it's, it's a concept of what does married people say? Married people say, we want to hang around married people. Mm-hmm. And they say that because if I'm married and I'm hanging around somebody that's single and me and my wife have a, a disagreement, I go to my, my single guy, they're going to say, bro, you don't need her. We're going out to the club tonight. I don't need to hear that. Mm-hmm. That's not the advice. Don't give me, I don't, I don't, I can't, you're supposed to be my friend. Like, be, be my friend. Yeah, yeah. But I can't expect him to be a married friend because he's not married. So my environment is going, is, is going to predicate my success. But if I'm hanging around married people and me and my wife have a disagreement, I go to one of my married buddies, he's going to say, hey, bro, go to Walgreens around the corner, get some roses, get our favorite candy, go back home and apologize. It's going to be OK. Now everything is fixed and everything is cool. It's the same concept. If you want to be successful, you got to hang around successful people. I like it. I like it. David Shans here, host of the Social Proof Podcast. Listen, man, there's two things that you need to do to have a very, very happy life. One is to get the bag. Okay, you got to get to the money. The second thing is you got to keep it. It's no fun to get to the bag and you look up at the end of the year. It's like, oh, where did it all go? Okay, so there's two things you got to do. Okay, you got to get the bag. You got to keep the bag. I'm so excited that my brothers Dion and Carter are actually doing a get the bag challenge where they're going to teach you both parts, how to get the money, how to get business funding, how to get financing, how to make money. And also how to keep it, how to not give the government all your money and to keep track of it. OK, so get the bag challenge dot com, get the bag challenge dot com. Click the link. There's a link somewhere below. I endorse this message. All right. Um, what have you noticed? Um, I think that people are scared to do new things. So one of my favorite quotes is that. You can't enter the land of phenomenal until you first leave the land of familiar. Mm. So many people are stuck in their own ways that mm. trying something like what they, they ask, they have the mindset, what if it doesn't work? Mm. But like, what if it does? Mm. Right. So I, I trained my students to shift their mindset before giving them the skill set because I get it. I remember being born in South South Chicago, being surrounded by poverty, lost my mom at 14, lost my dad at 16. I remember like not feeling like, I was even worth doing things, right? And then it was until I, I understood that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting to get a different result. So, so for me, I think people just need to take that first step, like do something new for the first time, see how it feels, and it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna strain you, but then see the results, and if it works, do it again. And then it starts to become, I have a nature in me now to chase things that make me scared. If it makes me uncomfortable, I know I need to go in that direction. Mm. Right. So I need to be chasing 
fear, right? Um, uh, uh, shout out to Trap. He, he said, fear stands for finally exiting average reality. Mm. There's no part of me that's average anymore. Mm -mm. So I need to exit any, any, anything that makes me scared I need to do because that, that makes me know that I can conquer anything and God will never put nothing in front of me that I, that I can't turn into a testimony. Are you afraid of marriage? Marriage is one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> Marriage is one of you those need to things. Run towards it, my brother. Uh, marriage Got is it. one of those but, things. But, but because again, I was raised in a household where nobody was married. See, mm. see his environment. My, see his my environment, environment made me think yeah. that marriages would fail. See, my environment wow. made me think that people can't stay together for a long time. See? So I'm actually going through therapy to figure out, like, hey, how can I shift this narrative? Because hanging with my successful friends like you. Dion, I want I'm Neo, him 500. I know all of them we had one thing in common. Y'all all married. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking about therapists the other day about it. I'm like, yo, I found a group of people that are making me believe that marriage is the way to go. Ah, that's good. And yeah. marriage can help me make, make me more successful because yeah. the way I grew up is like, that ain't the case. I don't so know, I I don't, I don't know about other entrepreneurs, but for me, I feel like my wife gave me like superpowers or something. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's just different, you know? Yeah. Like it's just different. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a at home like a, just a support system, cheerleader, just that's, it's amazing to have, bro. You, it just, it's a whole different ball game. I Shane, do you feel the same way about that? In the vi which part? The marriage part. I want to hit that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I go home, bro. This is the, yeah. this is probably the latest. I'll be out. And Reese to tell you like, I, we done three o'clock, four o'clock every day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I think y'all said something important because it's almost like, how do you, how do you change your mindset while you're in the environment that gave you that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I think one of the hacks is like you're saying environment. I think an easy thing to do is to get out of the environment, but, um, you still got to make the decision. I'm, I'll be trying to go deep on like how do we get past it? For instance, I, I, I came down from New Jersey. I came to Atlanta from New Jersey, my senior year of high school. And long story short, I wanted to go back to New Jersey where there was nothing there. Mm. Nobody there, right? Yeah. Nobody liked doing anything of significance, right? And my cousin said, hey, you need to stay here in Atlanta. I'm like, ah, but I want to go back. I want to see my friends. He said, yo, I'll buy you a car if you stay. Mm. I went back anyway. Oh, wow. The environment pulled me back so strong. There was no incentive in that moment that will help me change my mindset. What is it that we have to do? I think, do, do, you, do you have to first want to change your mindset? Mm. I think you need to want more. Out of, I, I, I think most people don't get what they want out of life because they don't feel like, they deserve it or that they're worthy of it. Right. So I think that you, you have to desire more than what you already have. And once you start desiring more than what you already have, you'll start leaning and being pulled into that direction of trying to, trying to attain it. But if you think that like, man, I'm just good with this $40,000 a year, man, this is, this is this cool. I'm comfortable. Some people will lie themselves into comfortability. Mm. But, but are some people comfortable in that for you, it might not seem comfortable. A one bedroom apartment with two kids, forty thousand a year. That might be comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. I think once you expose to something greater, you'll drop something lesser. Ah, yeah. So it's so forty thousand dollars a year is okay until you hang around people that are maybe making a hundred or two hundred thousand. You start seeing the things that they can attain. Not saying you're only chasing money or you're only chasing things in life that you don't need, but. I think that once you're exposed, so the brain is the only organ that doesn't have a disposal system. Hmm. It's the only organ that we have that doesn't have a disposal system. So ah. once you see something, wow. you can't unsee it, bro. Yeah. So that's why I think getting exposed is one of the number one things you can do early on. So you'd be like, oh, wait, wait a second. I can't unsee that. I know when you walked to somebody's podcast studio, you was like, yo, I can't unsee this. I need, I thought what I had before was cool, but like, I need something a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. Right, but you got to get exposed first. Yeah, the brain is the only organ without a disposal system. Yeah, so what goes in stays there. It stays there. Goodness gracious! So it's always there until you put more stuff on top of it. But it's still there though. Mm -hmm. But I guess you got to outweigh those experience, the good experiences, or positive experiences, or motivational experiences. Right? Where your background? Where, where's your environment? What environment? Chicago. So I mean, what? 
So coming down, like, I, I've been here only six months. Oh, you fresh, bro, dangling. Bro, and I've done, yeah, I've done more in six months than I've done in my last 30 years being in Chicago. So the 5X this year mm-hmm. came from a being bit here. To with the environment. Because when I met Neo last year, October, he said, you need to be in Atlanta. I said, well, why, why do I need to be in Atlanta? He said, because you need to be in proximity. I said, what are you, what are you talking about? He said, you need to be around me and these other people who are performing at the level that you, he said, if you want to like go up, he said, bro, you need to be in this environment. You need to be around people that's performing. He said, what's in Chicago? And I'm like, oh yeah, nothing. <laughs> and so he was, I was like, so when do I need to move? He was like, like yesterday. <laughs> so I met Neo in October. And then by April, I had my house built and moved in April of this year. I wasn't joking. Oh, wow. Me, my wife, three kids, and my mom here. No How excuses. How did your wife feel? My wife was just like, whatever we need to do, I'm with you. She said, I got your back. I'm with you. Whatever. Oh, that's what's up, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so for me, I, I just was like, all right, well, I'm in a situation where I need to give what I'm passionate about and what my purpose is. I need to give that all my, like my attention. And so I said, I'm gone. And I never looked back. I left all friends, family members. I said, I'm gone. That was it. I've been here ever since. And also when I say I've been going crazy, I've been going. You see, I'm on social proof. Look, I mean, what? I mean, you don't get no crazy like, than this. Than this. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Goodness gracious, man. I've, I've really been studying the psychology of what, what allows someone to win, especially let's just talk financially, yeah. right? Um, the idea where you're, you go get a developer and you put this thing together and make money. And I'd imagine you're thinking about exiting at some point. Yeah. Right. Selling the software. Um, what was that process like? And what were, at any point, did you want to quit? Wow. Um, no, I, I never really wanted to quit. Um, the process was actually it was scary. And I think that that was a part of me coming to Atlanta. I don't think that the opportunity would have presented itself had not not moved to Atlanta and I've been moving the way I've been moving. Give you an example. I said, if I move to Atlanta and I get more responsibilities, I'm going to want to perform at a higher level. So when I came here, I pretty much like tripled my monthly expenses. And so I had to do more in order to continue to afford more. And so like, I'm like, yo, what do I need to do? Neo, like, I'm like, Neo, what do I need to do? Like to just go crazy. And like, you need to get in front of more people. So million dollars worth of game, Ash Cash. Like this put, like just them two platforms alone put me in front of two million subs. Mm. And so by doing that, now I got all these people coming. But then I learned how to create digital products and services. So this whole entire time, I'm, I'm putting everything in place. I'm getting in front of more people. And I want this platform. I get on another podcast with my guy called uh, Marvin Francois. So I get on his podcast and somebody see me on there and they start watching me. I'm giving you this story. This is like, this is real stuff. I can't make mm. it up. So this, so this Caucasian gentleman is just watching me for like four months. Not saying nothing to me. This is the guy who helped me with this, the whole setup of the system. So he sent me a DM on Facebook one day. He said, man, I've been watching. Um, you're a genuine guy, heartfelt gentleman. You are really for the people. I want to introduce you. You know, he's, I want to introduce myself to you. I'm the owner of this system that you've been ranting and raving about. I want to give you an opportunity. I want to partner with you. And I want to introduce you to these developers. And I want you to, I want to create you your own. I was oh, like, wow. I was like, huh? Who, who, me? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm just this African-American kid from Chicago, just out here, just grinding and hustling, mm. trying to make it. And here this guy picked me out of everybody and he wants to invest in me and push me and give me my own thing. And so I'm like, this is, this is, this is kind of like God or dang, you know, this stuff wasn't supposed to happen, but because I had that intuition to just want more and want better for my family, I was put in this position. So am I surprised? Yes. But at the same time, I expect it because I've been putting in the work all mm-hmm. by just getting out there and just really doing what I was supposed to do and just being obedient to the word. Um, somebody just wanted to believe in me. So Amazing. now I have my own. Amazing. Yeah. Did you ever want to quit? Did you ever get to that point? Or not even quit. We call it rebranding sometime or doing something different. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> People mass quitting with rebranding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't believe in quitting because uh, I don't think that guy would ever quit on me. Mm. Right. Tough. So. Um, you ain't ever quit on a relationship? Ah! Wow, what is happening, bro? Dude, that is crazy. <laughs> that we is get you married. crazy. Listen, 20, ladies, listen. <laughs> take the mic, take the camera back to Carter. Okay? <laughs> Look at this man. He's gonna be healthy. Got all his teeth. Works out. 
That's your boy right there. Oh, I'm man. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> See, equity is my love language teacher, though, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no. So like again, um, I don't quit because like I lost my mom at 14. I lost my dad at 16. Um, my auntie raised me, and I recently uh realized that like losing my parents early is one of the best things that ever happened to me, respectively, because if I can get through that, mm. I can get through anything. You think start, starting a business is scary? Like, you think I got a problem with fit? Like, none of that matters to me. If I can get through losing my parents, I can get past that. Yeah. God put that in place on me early. Yeah. Like, all right, get, if you get through this, every other challenge will seem like light work. I love yeah. it. Right. So for me, I don't really believe in quitting because like um, it never really gets to me that deep because I know if I can get through that, I can get through anything. So I go when I go to business. It's like it has to work or it has to work. If it I don't want to quit mad times, bro. Really? Oh, what? All the time. You seem so, <laughs> you seem so chill, though, bro. Like you seem like you always got it together. Like well, I, well, I don't want to quit on the stuff that I don't want to quit on, but I'll be wanting to quit on certain things like and just do other stuff. OK, you know, what? I, I don't want to quit on anything. I more so just want to like just take breaks and just be with my family. That's it. Yeah. Like, but it's like that's a, that's a version. No, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I do that too long. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to just break. Like, even right now, I, I said I was gonna take December off. <laughs> It's December first, and I'm over here looking at my stripe. Yeah. Congratulations. You know, Congratulations! Like, Welcome to Atlanta. Yeah, okay, it's crazy. You might have been able to chill uh, in Chicago, but <laughs> not here, bro. All right, listen. Every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the MorningMeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call. Right? We're learning. We're talking. We're growing together. And this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. I, I want to give a couple, let's, let's talk about making money, right? Okay. And I want to give a couple principles on what it takes to make money, okay? You're running a seven-figure business, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, seven-figure, seven, high yeah. six, seven? Seven-figure business, okay. What does it take to run a seven-figure business? And I'm gonna ask you to give us one, okay? And I wanna go to kind of like the five steps to, or, or the five things they need to keep in mind to making a bunch of money. Okay, okay. actually, I wanna start with you, Carter. Mm. Give me so. number one. Number one, you have to become a master at something. Okay. Right? Um, a lot of people are a uh, mile wide and an inch deep in what they do. We need to be an inch wide and a mile deep. So I think you need to become a master or expert in something. Mm. If once you do that, you're able to monetize you, which is to sell your information for a high multiple. Like that, the, the one of the best things that anybody can ever do. I call it the three E model. You need to. First, um, get experience doing what you're doing. You need to first, then you need to become an expert, and that's an expert to you and an expert to others around you. Hey, uh, hold on, say that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> so much be with a self, yeah. they're a self-proclaimed expert. A absolutely. So you want to get experience first, then you want to become an expert, not just to you, but to those around you. You want to be seen as an expert, and that comes with putting in work. Mm -hmm. That comes with staying loyal to that one thing and not rebranding. Yeah. Right. Become a, <laughs> become an expert, and then once you become an expert, you can now educate. Once you start educating people on how to do what you do or how to become who you are, that's where you can start making a lot of money fast. I love it. Yeah. When we, I need to talk, I need to, I need that. Cause that was good. <laughs> that was good. I'm holding that in my like back that. pocket. That yeah. was good. That was that's good. Strong. Um, Number two, we're, we're just talking about making money. The top five uh, things to consider when making money. A lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it. Um, the first thing is we need to look at how college. Number two. Second, yeah. second, second, second two, second. Okay, yes. cool. So <laughs> number two is we need to look at how colleges has done us. Mm -hmm. So if we would spend four years of our life and go to a financial institution and give them, let's just say $100,000, then why wouldn't we invest $100,000 into ourselves? Mm -hmm. So we need to think about getting a mentor. If you want to make a lot of money and maybe fast, like not a little bit of money, over a long period of time. We spent a lot of money in a short period of time. If that's your aspiration, 
then you need to think about look at look at looking at mentorship like college. So as opposed to going and spending four years at a university mm-hmm. and giving them a hundred thousand, yep. why don't you go and find a what I would call entrepreneur, entrepreneur educator, and you give them, let's just call it ten thousand yep. and give them a year of your time. And they will teach you more in that year for that ten thousand than you would have gotten from a institution, from a college professor who's probably making 40000 a year. Mm. Like, why would I try to learn something from somebody who I don't want to be like? Mm. Can I expand on that right quick? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we were taught to go to school and spend $100,000 to go learn from somebody who is not doing what we want to do or who is not being who we want to be. See? We can't write that off on our taxes. We get a small deduction for tuition. <laughs> we, get a, we get a small deduction for tuition. We get deduction for student loan interest up to $1,500. Yeah. Yeah. Or... I can go pay a millionaire like Shan. Talk. I can go pay a billionaire like Grant Cardone. Talk. And I can pay them directly and get a 100% tax deduction for every single dollar that mm. I pay them. Because as a business owner, education is tax deductible. So you're getting rewarded. You're getting, you're getting a tax deduction to learn how to make more money from somebody who's proven to do it. And they, they have the receipts. They have the social proof. So that's why like people like mentors is a scam or a court. No, you already been scammed. You already been put in a system <laughs> yeah, that made sure. you spend four years, spend a yeah. hundred thousand dollars to come out making 40 K. So now we have to revamp our minds. I want to expand. You're that's not cool. going to talk spicy like that on me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Hold on. So, so here's the even be- better part with the concepts that I teach, because I teach you how to obtain a 700 credit score and get 100K in credit in less than 100 days. So then why don't you take the 100K that I showed you how to get and leverage your credit and monetize the entire situation? So if I show you how to go to these banks and these financial institutions to get $100,000 or $50,000, why wouldn't you then take that money, invest it into the mentor, like we saying, and then run up the bag and then pay the bank back? It's the same concept of when we go get a house, we don't get them $500 or $1 million. We say, hey, listen, I'm gonna pay you back over time. When we go get our car, we don't give them all the money. We say, hey, I'm going to probably give you a little bit down if I do. If I got good credit, I don't got to give you nothing. But I'm going to pay you back over time. Same thing with your education. Yeah. Why don't you just go get the money from the bank and pay the entrepreneurial educator and pay the bank back over time? Give yourself some time. Because most people say, well, I ain't got no money. I ain't, I ain't got 20000 to invest into your mentorship program. I ain't got 55000 to give you for your mentorship program. Yes, you do. You get your credit repaired. And you go to the bank and you get that line of credit. And you give that to your mentor. And then you go run the plays and you go run up a bag and pay mm-hmm. the bank back the money. Well said. Number one was become uh, an expert. Become an expert. Number two, you're saying invest. In, invest in the mentor. Give me number three. Um, number three is to um get actually let me do number three. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I got number three. Perfect. I got number three. You ready? <laughs> number three step <laughs> on making a lot of money is asking people for the money. Mm. You gotta ask them for the money. Mm. I'm not talking about GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm talking about you have to actually go to someone and say, I have a product or service. Would you like to buy it? Mm. Or you make a video that's selling someone on buying it. You got to ask, bro, the number one thing I I see the mistake that entrepreneurs make is they don't ask anybody for the money. Yeah. They'll actually make a video on, yo, I got this t-shirt brand. Look, it says consistency. This is what you need. Yeah. And then the video's over. <laughs> They're not willing to go in the streets and say, hey, would you like to buy this? Or they'll, I, bro, I remember being in the mall and people come to the kiosk and I give them a whole t- tour about, you know, this is what the Sleep is for Suckers brand is about. These t-shirts are dope. Like, look at the quality, material, colors, goes with your shoes, you'll like it. And they'll be like, oh, yo, you got a website? And that was the sign <laughs> Ooh. that told me they're about to leave. <laughs> now, yo, this is dope. You got a website or something? Yeah. Bro, why do you need a website where you can just buy it right here, right? But the crazy thing is, I'd be like, oh, yeah, we got a website, man. Yeah, follow me on Instagram, man. And they'd be like, yo, yeah, I'm going to check you out. I'm going to buy something later. And they leave. And you know what I fail to do? Ask them for some money. Just, I never asked them for the money. So I, 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 I had this rule where you got to tell me no three times. So mm. they'll be like, oh, you got a website? I'm like, yeah, we do, but you should just buy it now. Would you like to buy it? One, would you like to buy this shirt right now? They'll be like, no, nah, I'm going to check it out later. And I'll say, yo, hold on real quick. Let me ask you one more question. Would you like to buy the shirt now? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny, bro, mm. but you would not. Like you wouldn't believe how many people I converted on the second or third no, yep. just asking people for the money. Yep. Wow. Ask them, make some offers, do a pitch, mm. ask somebody for some money. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with number three. 
You've got to ask more people for money. The, mm. the offer you don't make is the offer, offer they, they can't, can't take. take. Dang. That part. That's number three. You're on number four. Let's do it. Woo. Okay, that, that's, that's good stuff right there. I, I think number four to making a lot of money um, is, I don't know if this counts as number three, but like make it easy to pay you. Like I feel like so many people, oh, that's good. like no, so many people, yeah. like don't make it easy to pay them. Like I have every payment process. How how you want to pay me? <laughs> Why a credit card? Deposit? Like let me know, right? And then like make it easy to pay them. I, I see so many businesses like when it comes to pay them. Oh, I don't have that set up. Oh, you gotta do this. You gotta go. Like mm. you making it hard. You made the sale. Now you making it hard to pay you. Mm. That's crazy to me, yep. right? So I think that as business owners, we have to do everything within our power to make it easy for the person to pay them while they're hot. Because once they go home and they they settle down, they're not thinking about you no more, right? So I think that if you if you find ways or avenues to make it easy to pay you, whether it's payment plans or whatever, make it easy to pay you, and then more people will pay you more often. So that's the psychology you're saying behind, like if you have like a thirty thousand dollar offer, yeah. You could ask for the thirty thousand yeah. right now, yeah. Or you could make it easy by what you say. You said like a payment plan, yeah, payment like plan or a deposit. We can do the rest, but I think that um, we have to make it as easy for people to pay us as possible, and then we have to. This is good. We have to believe that what we're selling is worth it. Mm. Greg Cardone has a quote in his one of his books. It says, "The first sale you have to make is you." If you're not sold on your product or you're not sold on your service, it's impossible to sell somebody else. Mm -hmm. So the first and biggest sale you have to make is you. So I think we have to be sold on our product. I know you're sold on a podcast. I know you're sold on the morning meetup. I know you're sold on the morning meetup. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? And people sense that. <laughs> and if you're, if you're sold, it makes it so much more easy to sell. Dang, okay. Yeah, that was like 4 and 4.5. So 4 would be <laughs> make it easy to pay you. Yeah. And then 4.5 is you got to believe that you're worth the money. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, give me five. For me, it would be, I think a lot of people don't make the money that they want to make because they're not aiming big enough. Mm -hmm. so, mm, I like that. Okay. Yeah. You're talking good. Explain it's, that. It's kind of like, for me, I think my first four or five about five or six years of entrepreneurship, I just kept talking about I wanted to make 100K. I just want to make six figures. That was it. And I was cool with it. And I made it and I hit it. It wasn't, I, I didn't start making seven figures until I, the moment that I said, I'm going up to seven figures. That's mm. all it took was just a decision. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> all I had to do was just make just one decision to say, I'm going for it and I hit it. So the reality is that a lot of us, we're hitting targets because they're too low. We need to aim high. Like mm. a lot of people around me are, Maybe they maybe they don't know it. I know it because I understand how this thing called life works. But a lot of people around me are starting to now make more money just by being around me. And the reason that they're making more money is because I'm stretching them. I'm making them think big. Yeah. So they're like, okay, they cool with their job making 40, 50, and then they running their side business, maybe making another 40, 50. So they cool at 100. But I, but like if you get on the phone with me and I'm telling you that I'm constantly doing about 100 to 200 thousand dollars a month. You get to you get to saying, wait a minute, okay, how can I how can I get where he's at? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking big, and then if I get on the phone with Carter and Carter gives me his gigantuan numbers, and then I talk to you, and then you say <laughs> yeah. something even crazier, I'm like, okay, yo, I need to think bigger, because if they can do it, then I can do it. And then I'm like, I was I was in a group text the other day, and I'm like, okay, so this guy just put up, he did 1.7 million this month. I'm like, all right, cool, I got to get it together <laughs> because. <laughs> Because I, I, gotta get it it doesn't, I saw that gave me a headache. I'm like, right right now? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense for me to post my little 200. It's not gonna yeah. 200k for the money. It's, he's like, all right, get it. Like, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, and then so I met this, and I'm like, hey, bro, congrats. You know, what I'm saying, I'm like, yo, you know, yeah. I'm like, go, you going crazy, seven figure. He's like, no, nah, bro, actually, it's eight figures in jail. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, you going crazy, crazy. He's like, but no, but congrats, to you, bro, you going crazy, seven figures. I'm not going crazy. Don't no, don't do me like that. <laughs> like, you going crazy? Like eight figures? That's different. So the thing is, I think that people just need to think bigger, mm. and, and and you'll get there faster. Yeah, and you can't even think bigger until you get around bigger. Yeah. Like, I, to your point. And I think it's so dope is that understanding that it's enough money that hit him making money ain't taking away from you making money. Yeah. Mm. Because what, what what you don't want to do is. Get jealous. Yeah. Like you had an opportunity, but hey man, I and he ain't on that. Like, no. Like somebody else's make uh, money does not take away from yours. What God put on this planet for you is yours. Yep. And we put on the planet for them is theirs. So understand that somebody else making money doesn't take away from your pocket. So that, that creates this abundance mindset yep. around everybody. And if you stay in that abundance mindset, I think you get further. I think so many people like are 
so many people suffer from the recession is because they accept it. Oh, wow. Dang, that's tough. Right? So many people, like they say, are in deception, they're in a recession. It, cre- it creates a scarcity mindset. They accept it. I'm not accepting that we're in a recession. We are doing great. Right? In my, in my mind, I refuse to accept that type of negativity because I deserve to live in abundance. As Ash Casper say, abundance is your birthright. And I'm living in that. Can I ask this question, though? Yes, sir. What if it is a recession, though? If I think it just it deserves um, the respect of considering it, right? So, for instance, I mean, I don't think I don't think Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos is like small thinking, mm-hmm. but they see something and they let mad people go. Yeah, that's crazy. They see something. Mm-hmm. What what I, what I would say is, I, and I know this for a fact because I study finance, I study the economy. Recessions are the time for people to make the most money mm. if you position yourself. So here's a concept I want everybody to try to adopt. We've always been taught to have an emergency fund, right? The, the term emergency puts you in a scarcity mindset off the cuff. <laughs> it's an emergency fund, right? And I'm not saying anybody shouldn't have an emergency fund. You want to have your, 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 your basis covered. But what about having an opportunity fund? Mm-hmm. I like that. You're talking so, good. Right? So now you have money set aside to take advantage of an opportunity if it persists, mm-hmm. right? One of the things I love about hanging with Dion, Dion, like hanging around him, I find I, I stumble upon money, yeah. like from a funding <laughs> standpoint, not twenty thousand this bank, fifty thousand. I'm just stacking my funding ability so that if a recession does happen, I have an opportunity fund and I'm able to take advantage of something versus being a victim of something. Okay, mm-hmm. I like it. I like mm-hmm. it. I like it. So it's not like you're closing your eyes saying it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You're saying it's not going to kill me. Come on. I'm ready for you. I'm ready yeah. for you. And I think we should be training like the bet. Like right now, if it is a recession, you should be doing everything you can to get information, to get knowledge, to get access to funds so that if it does happen, you can take advantage of it, not become a victim of it. So one of the things, the reason we're getting together and we, uh, we'll t- talk about it more later, but we're giving people opportunity to type in with us. I'm about to talk about it now. Talk about it now? Yeah, talk about it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're doing uh, a challenge called Get the Back, Keep the Back Challenge, right? It's going to be in January, and we're going to teach people how to get as much, how to fix their credit, get as much funding as they possibly can, and I'm going to teach how to use that funding within their business to take advantage of opportunities, not just take advantage of opportunities, but take advantage of opportunities that also make them more money and help them save on taxes, Mm -hmm. right? Because if we are, if we do have a recession approaching, I want you to have that opportunity fund ready so you can be like, yo, that recession was the biggest opportunity that took me and my family from generation of poverty to generation of wealth. I love it. All right. Wrapping back around to my first question, harder to make money or harder to keep it. Right. But we just talked, but I think you need to understand both. Mm -hmm. Right. They're both not, they're both not like easy, Mm -hmm. simple, maybe Mm -hmm. like it's like one, two, three step, but not easy necessarily. So we talked about kind of like the five things that it's going to take to make a bunch of money. So I think, in respect, we kind of got to talk about five things to help you keep it. So I'll let you start with one. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll knock the easiest one. The, one of the easiest ways. You to- might as well just give us three because this is, <laughs> this, this is, is bad, yo. Yeah. Just, just give us all, just give us three. Okay. <laughs> okay. I give one, you give one, he gives oh, yeah, three. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> How about you just give five and then we'll just help him out. Get some bonuses. <laughs> yeah, we, got, we got bonuses. Go for it. Go for it. What are the five, top five pieces of advice you would give someone to help them save all this money they're going to make. Okay. Well, taxes, is everybody's number one expense. The average person pays 51% of their lifetime income in taxes. That's the equivalent of working for 12 months, but the first six months are for free. Hey, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's, and and some, I hate that you put it like that. Golly. I just had to, I had to set the stage, right? Like if you've given 51% of your money away, you work in six months for free. So let me help you not do that. Right. So one of the easiest ways to keep the money is to avoid paying taxes. One of the best ways to do that is to learn tax strategies that you can implement throughout the year to keep the money. Right. So one of the easy. I'm sorry, real quick. Yeah. Avoid paying taxes or lower your liability. So tax evasion is illegal. Tax avoidance is legal. Tax avoidance, tax avoidance is finding legal ways to avoid paying taxes. Okay. Tax evasion is finding legal ways to avoid paying taxes. Hold so, on, whoa, whoa, whoa. You said, hold on. Tax evasion yep. is illegally doing things that 
evades your tax bill. Gotcha. Tax avoidance is using the tax code, leveraging it the, it the right way, because yeah. all the tax code is, is a series of incentives for us to follow. Tax avoidance is using the tax code to find legal ways to avoid paying taxes. Okay. Right. I'm with that. One of the best ways to do that is to leverage business credit to take advantage of buying equipment like cars or buildings, which give you this thing called depreciation. Mm -hmm. um, so I just bought a Lamborghini Urus and oh, this is good. So I, I bought a Lamborghini Urus using none of my money. The down payment was $50,000. I used my Amex card for the down payment. You can put a down, car mm -hmm. down payment on a credit card? Yeah. So sure can. I did with my Discover. Yep. Word. Yep. Yeah. So now I'm using other people's money to, to put a down payment on a Urus. I'm getting points back. For using that money, yeah. right? So that's number one. Number two, because of the IRS rule, I'm able to write off 100% of the cost of the year is the year that I purchased it. So I'll, even though I only put $50,000 down, the car co cost a quarter million dollars, I get a $250,000 tax deduction this year for financing the car, not using any of my money. Mm. So now if I'm in the 50% tax rate, if I'm saving a quarter million dollars, I'm saving $125,000 in tax, like dollar for dollar. I have $125,000 tax savings. Mm. Now of that $125,000, I'm gonna take 50 of that savings that I was gonna pay the IRS to pay my credit card back that I used for down payment. Gotcha. Now I just created $75,000 out of thin air by using other people's money to keep the bag. Got it. Okay, mm. so first, first way of keeping the money is understanding how to avoid taxes or as much as you can. As much as you can. In tax, what's number two? Number two, um, the, 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 one of the easiest, the best things I've ever done um, to keep my money is this model called Profit First, where I allocate a percentage of all the money I make to separate accounts. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I, you know, 40% of my money is reinvested into my business, right? Operating expenses. 10% um, of my money is going towards savings, 20% taxes. If you give your money a name or a title, you know where your money's going. If you don't give your money a name or a title, your money's gonna go where it decides to go. So I think that business owners need to, or anybody needs to allocate their money by a percentage basis. So that way it don't matter if you, it don't matter if you make 10,000 or 10 million, a, a certain percentage is allocated to all the goals for you. Let me ask you, is that money, does it like, okay, so say somebody buys something from you mm -hmm. for $100. Yep. The hundred dollars goes in one bank account and then you pull 40 out and put it in somewhere else. Or do you have some sort of automated situation? Um, so I'll, I'll do it. I do it once a month. Uh, at the first of the month, I move all the money to the separate accounts, right? You can do it once a week. Um, that, I don't know of an automated system that'll move it for you, but um, that should exist. It should exist. Hey, that might be an idea, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, ask your developer. See if <laughs> it, that would be ill yeah. if like, if like through your Stripe or whatever, or you know, however your payment processor yeah. is. It comes in, but it splits it out yeah. into different accounts. That would be good. Dang. Yeah. That's the idea. That's all right, really somebody, somebody else go. When I, when I worked a job, it used to be like that. I used to have it go into these all my different accounts. Mm -hmm. So that way I didn't have to try to move money around. So, so whenever I got paid, I, it was boop, boop. It was percentages, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. But now I have it where I just have it where, because I got similar accounts like him set up, you know, the, the, uh, the savings accounts and all the retirement accounts. And I just have it where they just automatically, it's like an auto pay. It just comes out of my account going yes. into those accounts. Yeah. So, I mean, my checking, my personal checking does send money to my savings and like, it's like an automatic, just kind of like draft or whatever, mm -hmm. but I wish it was like percentage based somehow. So I have, I have a young lady who um, she handles all like my mutual funds, my brokerage accounts, my annuities and all of that. And it's just set up with like with American funds and all that. They just they just auto deduct like it's a bill. Mm. Like it just comes right out of the business account. Boom, go straight into whatever account it needs to go into. Mm, that's that's a good gym right there. Pay, pay yourself like you pay your bills. Yes. Don't miss a payment. Yeah. I've right. been missing mad payments. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if we pay, if we paid our savings accounts like we paid our bills, we'll all keep the money, keep keep more of our money. Mm. Right. So I think that we need to pay ourselves like we pay bills and pay ourselves first and don't miss a payment. That can be like another way to keep more of your money by paying yourself first, paying yourself like a bill, and you'll be good to go. That was a strong three. Yeah. My one, and I got this from George. Um, and it was the oh my gosh. I actually looked this morning and it was disgusting. George said, uh, the number one way that kills people's wealth is food. Mm. If you think about how much you spend on food, mm. bro, I so I was looking at my and this is like one 
account. So I've I've I have a couple of business accounts that got personal or whatever, but my business expenses, which I guess I'm not super mad because you you need to write it off, but it's still a nasty number. It was like forty three thousand dollars I spent in eleven months on meals and entertainment, mm. and that's all meals because I don't do entertainment like yeah. that. <laughs> So that's, that's why you say in December you're not you're not going to more no more no, restaurants. No, I'm not. No, that's why I made that announcement, bro. Mm. I'm not. Mm. I if we go out to because I'll just like if we all went out to eat. Now my people's we just did the podcast. I'm gonna pay for it. Yeah. All right. Me and Reese go hang out. Me me and the team. I just I just pay for it. It's just what I do. Not this month, bro. That joint was crazy. <laughs> but think mm. about this: if you had forty thousand dollars, right, and I gave you a challenge. How much could you turn forty thousand to in six mm. months or a year? A lot, yeah. How much? Give me a number. Just if you had forty thousand that you had to flip a bunch of times for the year, how much would you turn into? At least at least two hundred fifty thousand. At least a quarter. I was gonna say about two ten. Yeah, bro. I think about seven times. I ate two hundred fifty thousand dollars. How you looking at it? Wow. I just ate it, bro. Yeah. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. It's like I put a quarter million dollars on the table, got a knife and some butter and some yeah. ranch dressing, and just started eating my. <laughs> It's crazy. Forty forty thousand dollars, bro. It just I just I could I could have made another two fifty. The question is, that two fifty, what would I do with that next year? Mm. I ate millions. That's good. So, That's good. Thank you. Mm. I, I I hate that I had to learn the lesson to be <laughs> to have this understanding. But um yeah, so food, bro. Stop eating out so much. Stop going on dates. Try to get them to come to the crib and cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be trying to get married, bro. You're telling me not to go on dates, man. That's crazy. Those are my single moves back in the day. Okay. We're just going to come through and cook. Uh, so that would be my how to keep your money. And not even just food, just frivolous spending. Yeah. And I know, Carter, you like to have a drink every now and again. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yo, but Carter That's true. said, yo, when we go out, I'm getting a drink. He said, everywhere I go, I'm going to get a drink. But some people just, they don't have the financial maturity to not you make the money so you do what you want right but there's some people you too broke to drink mm. you too broke to be smoking what's up with you that's crazy uh so that'll be mine how do you keep the money give me one i would say just like anything else um if we want to be successful we get us a coach why not get a money coach Ooh. why not get somebody who can help manage the bag that's good that's that, good that's probably what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna hire i think i'm gonna hire george my homie to just manage because if you have two people against your finances yeah. like yeah, it's on check. Four hours are better than one. Yeah, like for me, for me to have a young lady who set up my accounts, like she, like she was able to tell me because this, this is not what I do. This is what she do. So she like, yo, when you turn sixty, you are gonna have one point over here. You are gonna have three over. I was like, yeah, that, that's cool. Mm. You can keep taking whatever you need to take <laughs> and keep saving it. So that way, when I turn sixty, when I just need some extra money, I got some extra money there. Like I don't plan on going broke, but. It's, it's good to know that somebody is helping you plan and save for it. not only just your future, but for my baby's future. So I got three kids. I can't just be worried about me, you know? So it's a different game we're playing right now. I love that. Yeah, I, I was actually, uh, I get all the game on morning meetup, but there was, uh, I have an Acorns account. You got Acorns? Yeah, oh, yeah I love Acorns. Acorns. My, my Acorns pays my, my travels. Yeah, Bro, I looked at it. This is my first time looking at it in a minute. From 2019, um, I looked at it today and there's $17,000 in that joint. Wow. If somebody took $10 out of your account today, you're not going to notice it. Nope. Tomorrow, you're not going to notice it, right? I didn't even real. I don't know when I, at first, at one point I had like the, the I had $5 going out of my account, mm -hmm. going to Acorns every day. Just $5. Because I knew I wouldn't miss it. You know what I mean? And then it went into ten dollars every. So it's nothing like super crazy. And then when I swipe my card, it rounds up to the nearest dollar. So just having $10 out of my account going every day, which by the way, since 2019, I forgot about. And I just, I, and I had, to, it took me a while to log in. I'm like, dang, I don't know the password because I ain't been in it. I looked today and it, it shocked me, bro. It said $17,000 in that account. Set my acorns back up on Yo, set it uh, round up. Ups. I only had <laughs> I five. Get, I had to set the round up, back up. Yeah, ten dollars out of your account every yeah. day. It's Twenty dollars. I, I think I want to step let it up to twenty. Let really? Me, let, me, let me download this app too. Hold Yo, on. it's crazy, bro. Yeah, this is and this. okay, I got affiliate link. I think. To, <laughs> <laughs> I think I have acorns affiliate link. So everybody, calm down. Okay. okay. Um, yes. Okay. So was that that was five? 
That was fun. That's fine. So we yeah. taught him how to make money and how to keep how it. How to keep it. Yeah. The two most important things for an entrepreneur. Um, so I guess, all right, we've been here for an hour. Wow, that's been an hour. It's been a good conversation, man. It's a really good yeah, conversation. Good. Yeah. Good. All right, so, okay, so y'all got something going on, which I absolutely love because uh, it's a collaboration mm -hmm. where you two do something similar but totally different. Yeah. So you teach people how to obtain more money, Dion, like yep. how to make more money, how to get more money, right? Yep. And you teach people what to do to make sure it doesn't just fall through your grubby little fingers mm -hmm. and or give it all to the government. Which So I think like coming together is like the perfect storm of financial literacy. So um, I need, I need y'all to tell me about the challenge because uh, I need to be a part of it. Okay. <laughs> you might even need to come speak one of the days, man. Uh, <laughs> I think, can I? <laughs> I mean, I feel like you're, you know, no. but I'm not an expert like y'all in the space. I'm, I'm gonna go yeah. off on a tangent, start teaching about podcasts. And stuff. I would though, I would. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. gotta figure out what to teach. Okay, um, but yeah, so we decided. All right, at the beginning of the year, everybody's in that new money, new me mindset, right? So why not give them not just a mindset, but the tools to actually take that mindset and build it into a skill set? Mm -hmm. So we we're having a uh, get the bag, keep the bag challenge. J get the bag, keep the bag. Get the bag. That needs to be the, the motto. Bro. Mm. Get the bag, keep the bag. I don't have hey, no so tattoos. Trademark that. Yeah, but, we got, I got. You. Yeah. If I, I don't have no tattoos, but if I was a tattoo getter, I would tattoo that. Get the bag, keep the bag. Get the bag, keep my, the bag. That is a mantra, bro, to live by. Yeah. Facts, facts. So we decided to have this get the bag, keep the bag challenge. We teach people at the top of the year, here's how you get the money, right? Here's how you build that opportunity fund up. Mm -hmm. In case we are in a recession, here's how you build that money up. And I'm going to teach you how to use that money to keep to keep the money as well, how to manage it, how to keep it. So now doing this in January, our money's on people's mind. We're giving them the skill set to turn 2023 into the best financial year that they've ever had, regardless of what's happening with the economy. So to get this money, yep. does it require any special skills, talent, personality? Because nah, I got personality. Nah, nah. I feel like I can get some money, but there might be some people look like, oh, I don't got that type of personality. I'm not as outgoing. No. Nah. This, and and this, this is what I think. This is shocking. 34% of Americans have bad credit. 34%. That's one out of every three people. So like, well, we don't, we don't have these challenges. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but look at everybody so, like. <laughs> so it's like, if you, if you got three best friends, one of your three best friends got bad credit. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that one of your three best friends, they, they don't have the opportunity. One out of three Americans don't have the opportunity at the lifestyle that they deserve, want, need, or got to have. Mm -hmm. And so that means that they're suffering. So I come in and I just go over three small prints. I say, hey, listen, I'm going to show you how to repair it without paying somebody else. I'm going to show you how to enhance it. If you don't just have bad credit, you just say, I just never used it. Let me show you how to enhance it so you can qualify for the bread. So either we're going to repair it or enhance it so you can go get this money. And I'll just show you where to go get the bag at. And he show you how to keep it. So if you having credit challenges, I got you. So you're saying if I improve my credit, yep. I can get money. Yes. Hold on real quick. And I just want to give a blanket statement. If someone has good credit, can they go get access to money tomorrow? Yes. And that's everybody. Today. If a human being has really good credit or they work on Wait. building their credit, that very next day they can get access to money. If, if the credit is good, yes. But also what goes into that, and this is why you have to have a coach or a mentor, you need to, go, you need to know where to go to get the money. Mm. Like I'm, I'm, and I, I, ain't try, I ain't trying to talk bad about Capital One, but that ain't where you want to go. Because you're gonna end up getting a three hundred dollar limit, five hundred dollar limit. You uh, can have a seven hundred. For sure. Yeah. So why would you go to Capital One? Why wouldn't you let me give you the banks that you need to go to, and you get ten thousand, fifteen thousand? Now we could do something. Now we could play ball. But I can't. If I'm gonna go to Capital One and get three hundred dollar limit, what, what I'm gonna do with that? That's mm. that's not gonna help me out. So I, I'm going to give you like I give the specific banks, and I ain't trying to make us sound excellent and hype us up. But we've done this before. We got a track record. Success has receipts. We've had similar webinars and challenges that we've ran. It's, it's not, it's not going to be comparable to this one, but we've had, where well, I've literally on the call, quarter million dollars. You watched it live on the call. Mm. You, you, you can't, what, what, what call to say? You can't unsee these things that are happening. <laughs> so you're on a call and you sit there and you know you got bad credit. So now you got to watch the good people on the call, the people on the call with good credit, sit here and get funded live on the call. You're like, yo, that's 10,000, 20,000, 15,000. So now I'm going to show you I don't care where you live. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what kind of experience you got with credit repair. I'm going to show you how to get the job done. 
I got mm. you. This man got somebody $105,000 on a free webinar. What? $105,000 in funding on a free webinar. I'm like, hey, bro, no, we got to do this. Like, we got to do this for real. Like, if, if you got somebody $105,000 in, in 65 minutes, what if we do this five-day event where we're help coaching them the whole way? Like, it's yeah. over. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this one about to be crazy. Yeah. This the, is this the one that they don't want to miss. This is the how, one. How did y'all come together and come up with this idea? Or just get the bag, keep the bag? Because it seemed like the perfect storm. It was actually honestly. Carter's. I can't, I can't take yeah. credit. So I had this idea of I wanted to do a challenge at the beginning of the year. Um, I knew how to help people keep the bag, but I didn't know really how to help people get the bag that well. So I've been like vetting people for a while in the back. Like, who do I want to do this event with? And, um, you know, uh, we, we got to know each other. We did some stuff together. And he's so genuine. He's so serious. And I think us both being black males from a city that people don't, that has a crab in the barrel mindset. I'm like, man, this is bigger than this. It's just teaching people um, financial literacy. This is also showing them that collaboration over competition and that two people who are doing well that come from a city that has a crab in the barrel mentality can come together and put on an event for the world and really change the, the, not just financial literacy, but the, but the mindset of like, yo, um, we don't have to always try to bite each other's necks. Like, let's come together and let's teach and we all can win. Like, everybody can win. There's no limit in this. So I had this idea for a while. I hit him up about it uh, halfway through the year. I'm like, hey, man, mark your January down. Shut everything down. We're doing this, we doing this challenge. We're going to change the world. Yeah. I love it. That's exciting. Okay, so how do they uh, get involved? Like, what do we do? Yeah. You text well, them. the first thing they need to do is they need to text proof. You like that? Oh, word? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Text yeah. proof to 74121. Um, they're gonna get a link so that way you can go ahead and uh what, what's the number again? Proof to seven four one two one. Okay. Seven four one two one. That's all they gotta do is text proof, the word proof, P R O O F, just like social proof. Text proof to seven four one two one. We're gonna get them locked in. Yeah. Get them locked in. And we also we'll we'll have the link to the direct link in the show notes as well. So okay. they so, okay. they, so they, they can they can uh they can sign up. But like, yeah, man. Um and we're doing something special for the first hundred people. Is there a website? Yeah, yeah uh, they're gonna, they gonna get a text to link. So when they text that proof, just text the link. Okay, yeah, gotcha, the link okay, gonna come gotcha, back gotcha. to them. Yeah, and, and we'll have the link. But okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We doing something special for the first 100 people because I believe that success loves speed, as we always know. And I believe that the quicker people learn how to execute on opportunities faster, they'll start doing that more. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a surprise giveaway. Um, it's gonna be a thousand dollars plus in value for some of the, the, some, one of the first 100 people to. Oh, I thought you were gonna give away the car. <laughs> the Lamborghini? Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't no, know. No. I didn't know, how, I, I know how serious you was for the culture. You wow. know what I mean? Just like, oh, he wow. said, wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> for those first hundred people, I don't know. You know what I mean? Raffle off the lamb. Okay. <laughs> Raffle right. off the lamb. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Nah, but uh, yo, thank y'all so much, man. Uh, I've enjoyed this conversation. Yeah, this was good. Sure. This was really, really good. And I think there's this, this is like a, um, this is a rewatcher. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I think this is one that you watch now, then a couple months later, you watch it again and you share it with your friends and family. Like y'all really got to share this one out because so much information was dropped here. So um, listen, let everybody know how they can connect with y'all, man. And um, do y'all have a particular goal of like how much funding you want to have or how many people you want to be, uh, uh, you want to like how many success stories do y'all have a goal of y'all come together? Yeah. With that? I think we can generate five million dollars in funding yeah. yeah at least five million dollars in funding for, for people and i'm gonna help them uh i'm i'm, I'm gonna give over five million dollars with the tax saving strategy so mm. you can say five and five yeah I like, that. Like, like my personal goal is i would love for the people that show up to get them like fifty thousand plus you know individuals who just serious and who show up and who run the plays and who execute show you how to get at least fifty thousand dollars plus so you go into the new year with fifty thousand and he's gonna show you how to save the 50 so it's a free 50 Minimum. Mm. So that so that in itself, I think you could do some with fifty thousand. So if we get a oh, thousand sure. people in the room, I think the math will math. That the math will math. So we get a yeah. thousand people in the room and do fifty thousand each person, that's 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 so, five million dollars. So then what they need to do is they need to text proof <laughs> to seven four one two one. They'll get some and, direct uh, link. You're gonna get that link. Go ahead and get in the room and listen, man, we're doing a challenge. So we do have the opportunity for people who want to get in and ask questions. What they need to do is they need to go VIP. I think that we have some people that are very important. Mm -hmm. They know they're very important yeah. people. So don't don't be the guy that's in the club looking at the, the guy up there with the sparklers <laughs> having fun. Yeah. Be the guy with the sparklers. Yeah. Be the guy with the sparklers in VIP. <laughs> be, that's a very important person. So that's where you want to be. We, you're going to be able to you know, ask questions in that, in that particular part of everything. So yeah. 
That's it. Yeah. Because if, you, if, you, if you don't think you're a very important person, how will anybody else think you're a very important person? Mm -hmm. And the, the VIP tickets is cheap as I don't know what. So um, I think everybody should, should join VIP, get to access questions, get to really tap in with us. And also, the VIP, like, they'll be able to ask live. Like, yeah. Live. Ask you in their particular situation, like yo, this is my situation. Yeah, okay, I like that. Absolutely, I absolutely. Like that. We want to give people a personal touch point. That's dope. And if you're walking into 2023 with fifty thousand dollars and a recession do hit, you, that fifty that'll hold, yeah. hold you down. Just in case, just down. in case, keep it in your pocket. All right, <laughs> man. I love this, man. Thank y'all so much for uh, empowering the community, empowering uh, entrepreneurs, empowering people who really just want more out of life, man. I, th I think you guys are doing phenomenal jobs, man. So um, I'm going to have all, both of y'all just close this out with a word of wisdom, uh, something to put a bow on this whole conversation. And uh, Carl, I'll start with you. In order to have an above average income, you must first become an above average person. Mm. So do everything you can to become an above average person. And you, it's inevitable that you will have an above average income. I love it. Dion, talk to me, man. Take us um, out. Man, normally the enemy is the enemy. So you have to, you have to get past yourself. A lot of people are stuck in the same position, same mindset, just the same everything. And I know you want better for yourself. So you got to get past you. Get that enemy out the way. Because it's, it's just enemy. That's it. I love it. Listen, man, we can't close it out no better than that. Man, do yourself a favor, man. Join the challenge. Text PROOF to 74121. 74121. Be a part of the challenge. Educate yourself, man. Start investing in yourself. All right? This ain't even real, really no big investment. It's actually... About the cost of a uh, of a really really cheap date. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A Perhaps. really cheap date. I'm talking about like the two for twenty couple of drinks and appetizer, <laughs> dessert. Like, you know I mean? <laughs> so instead, of just take one night off from Olive Garden, okay? And then you know, invest in yourself, okay? And then uh, go get yourself some, go go get yourself some social proof. Meaning, go build something. But you got to come back to your community and teach them how you did it, okay? Mm. It's the only way our community grows, okay? We are out of here. So like, subscribe, follow us, share it. Peace.